Greetings, it's Dr. Burnett, publisher and pusher. The all body place of encouragement, cultural empowerment. Weekly, she'll engage conversations with entrepreneurs and creators. And these insightful interviews are designed to help us build our businesses, respective brands, ourselves, and to hopefully propel us to that next level of greatness. Big Boss. So with no time to waste time, it's officially go time. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Annette Publishing Pusher. I am excited as always. Y'all probably say she always excited when she come on here. But when I get the opportunity to speak with some vibrant voices, woo, and especially sisters mm, with something to say, because sometimes they're talking and they're not saying anything. But I met this jewel here and I've not connected her with her many times, but the times that we have, it has been empowering. And I always say when you can connect with somebody and it seemed like you just spoke to them on yesterday. That's how that connection is. But I want to introduce to you all Shonda Campbell from Speak Woman Magazine. Hi, Shonda. Hi, dear. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. This is an honor and a blessing. Yes, yes, yes. For, for you and for me, let me tell you. I am excited that you took the time out of your schedule today to come in. And I just want to present this as a chat. We just conversing. And so I would like you to just get started just telling the audience a little bit about your beginnings and how you kind of got to a certain point before we get to talking about a book on your magazine. Absolutely. So I am, I always start off with an introduction as being God's favorite daughter. Um, God loves me and I get his favor and he jumps the line for me. And throughout my life, he has shown just that uh, I am a mother of two amazing children. I have been in the medical field and mental health field for over 20 years. So being a caregiver is who I am, was raised by an absolutely amazing mother who planted seeds in me uh, that are still uh, growing and still uh, just touching every area of my life. And so I'm just a servant of God. I have a lot of titles, but at the end of the day, I am here to serve. And the first service that I do is to my lovely babies who are no longer babies, but they are out here doing amazing things in the world. And that's what I'm, what I'm most proud of. You know, you said a word that is really sig simple word, but yet significant. You said care giver. That is such a powerful word because there are times in everybody's life when they need someone to give them care. Wow. And how do you see you being a caregiver impacting the people that you minister to? I, I think for me, it starts off as, as a foundational word of care. You know, many times when you hear caregiver, we automatically go to the medical field, you know, uh, but in all actuality, all areas of service, you are giving care. And so that really taught me that foundation taught me to how to um connect the mental, the physical, the everyday basic needs of caring for someone. And that affects all areas of life. So it's at the foundation, I believe, again, caregiving and being a servant, they go hand in hand because you're serving someone. You are you are taking off your coat, rolling your sleeves up and doing the service to meet their need, whatever that may be, whatever industry that may be, you are willing to do the work to give the care that they need in that moment. You know, as I was looking at, a, a, well, I've talked to you, like I said before, but you have so much. This is, she has a plethora of things going on and that, and that she has done. And I was looking at public relations. You, you, you do branding, marketing, event planning, hosting. You, all of those are, are professions and specialty areas where you have to care for the needs of people. So I think that's wonderful. You mentioned excellence and what you do. How do you get excellence going forward in the things that you are doing? Wow, that word is powerful to me. And that means it, it just sets off 
almost like fireworks when, when it said, because in excellence, doing everything in a spirit of excellence, it affects every area. And for me, that means, uh, especially as an entrepreneur, many of us, you know, we start off, you know, being a one man band and we got to do everything. And, and many times that can give us almost an excuse to not move in excellence. It almost gives an excuse to be mediocre. And so whatever it is that I'm doing, I understand, number one, that I'm doing it for the glory of God and to the glory of God, but ultimately you get back what you put into it. So if I'm approaching anything, if I'm caring for a person, if I'm caring for my business, if I'm caring for uh, myself, if I give it my all and do it in excellence, I'm not crossing, I'm not trying to cut any corners. I'm not trying to take a shortcut. I'm trying to take it the long way because I am having, putting the care into every step. And that's able to walk into whatever it is that I'm doing, walk into it knowing, hey, I'm, I'm, I can do this. I have confidence in doing this. Not, oh my gosh, I don't know. No, I have confidence and I'm going to show up as the person that I know that I am, not the person that I am becoming. We are always becoming, but I'm going to show up as I'm already there because in actuality I am. This is just because other folk don't see it. That does not mean that I am not the top tier in whatever I'm doing. So I'm going to do that in excellence. I'm going to do that with my shoulders pushed back. I'm going to do that with my head held high. I'm going to do that with my whole chest because that's what excellence is. It's the, the, the emotion and the power that I put behind it. And that's what really makes it difference and can touch where people wherever they are because they understand that spirit of excellence that you're operating in that's good something that we all should have that our emphasis is always to put forth the best that we possibly can amen, amen. <laughs> so as as um as i read and have talked to you um and i wasn't quite sure of this and so if i'm getting a little too personal you just let me know okay because i know that you mentioned your mother, your speaker, your mental health advocate, but it also says that you are a survivor. So everybody's been through something, but it is, is it something from what you survived through that you could impart to someone today to help them as they're going through something? Wow, that that's that's a phenomenal question. Uh, and I am always transparent because that's what we stand on. I stand on that we that we overcome by the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. and the word that's of our great. testimony. There are people that need to hear it. And so I'm always open and transparent because God has done a work in me and allowed me the strength to do so. Uh, so I say all that to say, uh, I am again, um, a, a product of an amazing mother who instilled common sense into me, who instilled knowledge into me. But I know that from where I come from, being in a place of poverty, being in a place of not necessarily having uh, the things that would make life easy, uh, and that almost uh, gave gives an excuse to sometimes for us to walk into dangerous territory. So I found myself knowing better, but being in toxic relationships with men, uh, and that was after a trauma. I am a rape survivor. I am a molestation survivor, uh, and that unhealed trauma that I held on to, it manifested in promiscuity. It manifested in me going towards men who would say things um, that that would touch an unhealed part of me. And I would just love, oh, he loved me, he loved me. And then I'm in a toxic situation. So fast forward, um, I have been abused. I have been um, assaulted. I have um, lost a pregnancy. I have um, had bones broken. I have had near-death experiences multiple times. Um, and all of that, God told me along the way, like, you're going to, eventually, you're going to stop being hard-headed. <laughs> eventually, because I, I already know that God has protected me but mm. there was something that I was running away from and I was walk. I was thinking I was running away from it, but I was walking into toxic situations. And so it took for me to really have a moment, a come to Jesus with moment with, uh, with my God after my mother passed. And after I was literally suicidal, my son was three years old. My daughter was about seven and I was getting ready to take myself out. I said, God, it's been so much trauma. It's been too much. I can't take it anymore. Anybody in, in those situations where we've reached the edge, 
we like either God, you fix it or you take me out of here. And that was a moment that that occurred in my life. And my son woke up and he was three years old. He wrapped his arms around me and he said, mommy, I love you. And that just hit me. And, and that was literally the moment that God told me, I love you. Like I kept you for a reason. I love you while you were in the midst of doing the things that you know better. We do stuff and we know better, but I love you enough to keep you. And now it's up to you to heal and move forward or to stay in this spot and literally die. And that was a decision that I made, not only uh, for myself, but first for my children. I did not want my children to have to deal with the trauma of not having their mother there, not having their healed mother there. And that led me down my own path. For so long, I have been a caregiver to others. I took mm -hmm. care of everybody else. I took care of my children. I took care of my family. I took care of strangers. I took care of everybody but myself. And God revealed to me that that was a form of me running away. You know, when 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 your house is dirty, you're you going to go over somebody else's house and try to help them clean their house, <laughs> but you still got to come home to your dirty house. Mm -hmm. And God told me, now you're going to keep running or are you going to deal with this situation? And that was literally, I grew up in a church. Uh, my mother was a minister. Uh, I, I wasn't in ministry at the time, but I knew that there was a ministry call on my life. And I said, God, I don't want to fake the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, we go to church or we go to, you know, empowering events and we listen to motivation and folk, they give you all this colorful stuff. And it's not necessarily that it's not necessarily the whole truth, the whole picture. I see you whole, but what, how, how'd you get there? I can't even see the path. And so to be able to create that, that, that pathway, God said, let me do a work in you. And the Holy Spirit really came into my life and really um, took off all the religion, took off all of the shame, the guilt, took off all of the restraint. Because sometimes they, you know, even when you walk right, you have to color in the lines. You got to fit in a box. But I said, God, I, I'm a loud girl. Like I, I, I was a fighter. You know, I will fight you. Like I'm not about to be something I'm not. I like to laugh. I like to joke. I like to have a good time. I'm not trying to be restrained. And the Lord revealed to me that in Christ, there is freedom. You can do all of that. You can have fun. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, God, well, 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 I volunteer to be your example to the world, to show folk that you can love God, be a little hood and a whole lot of holy and still walk in purpose and have a relationship with God. And that just led down the path of revealing that sometimes when you go through those dark moments, when you go through those near death situations, when you go through those times when you want to give up, I'm here to tell you, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, still walking through fire, <laughs> still going through. But I haven't lost my mind because I have not lost my foundation. You have to have some type of anchor in your life. And the Holy Spirit has become my anchor, has become my friend, has become my guide, has become my protector, has become my provider. And how can I not shout to the world what the Holy Spirit has done for me and others around me? And that's 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 the platform. We, we share stories because I'm like, hold on, you got it all together. Dr. West, you look amazing. But let me, what, what, what your story is? You know, what you What's going and on behind that? Like you said, everybody has a story. Maybe it's not been told yet, but everybody does have. And maybe that story isn't for everybody, but it's for someone or ones in a particular situation and environment. So I do believe that it is important for us to not be ashamed of our stories is what I hear you saying. And, and that even though we may be going through some hard times, we can still be a blessing to others. That's what I heard you saying. Like you were caregiving, you were taking care of all of these other people, but you weren't taking care of yourself in the process. But you came to that point that when you hit that wall and you said, it's time for me to fully make this change. Because many times we know people are straddling the, the, the fence, as they say, they, you know, they're over here and over there. 
But just to get that relationship with King Jesus and build that relationship every day, how important is, is it to these people that are going through something, Shonda? It, it is breath and it is water. Have you ever been in a situation where you can't breathe? Mm. You literally can't breathe. You are uh, having a, a, a moment and you're like, okay, this is the moment where I'm going to be out of here. But then you reach a place and you reach a place of fresh air and you can take that breath in. And many of us, if we are not out of breath or losing our breath, we can take our breath for granted. But oh, what happens when you're in a moment and you are desperate for that next breath? That desperation, that desire to, to, to lead me to the fresh air is necessary for all of us. It's fresh water because there are times, you know, we, you ever drunk some Kool-Aid, you drunk some soda, you drunk all of these other liquid items, but you that ain't hitting it. it. It ain't hitting it. We need that fresh water. So it is literally breath and water. It is necessary. And although we may take it for granted, it is necessary. And there is a time when we have to take a consideration of what's going on. Because sometimes, you know, the, the adversary, the, the entity that is against us fulfilling our purpose is very, very crafty. And I heard you saying, you know, when you're going through, you can take care, you, you can be taking care of other people. And to some people, oh, that's not bad. You know, I'm going through, but I'm taking care of other people. But are we running away from taking care of ourselves first. And the enemy can pervert the word of God, can pervert truth and make us feel like that's a good thing. But once we come out of it and we go through the process of healing, we go through the process of prioritizing things and go through the process of learning that self-care is not selfish, learning the process that I'm supposed to serve from my saucer and not my empty cup, then I'm able to see that once that 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 transition happens, then yeah, I am still serving from a broken place, but I'm doing it in a different way. I'm not running away from God. I'm running to, I'm not hiding the shame, the guilt, but I'm also not identifying that as my long-term story. You know, many people, we can go through stuff and we hold on to it. Mm -hmm. We hold on to, oh, I went through this when I was 17. Well, you're 99. <laughs> and, and, I, and I don't like the word, I don't like the phrase, get over it, because we get through it and we have to keep adjusting. But come on now, we got to push through. So I am not my story. I am his story. I am her story. I am the purpose. And these are all things that are that God is using to color the picture of my life. That's rich. Really, really um, powerful thoughts shared with, with the listeners because definitely somebody listening is going through something. So what uh, Shonda just shared with you is I, I just pray that it really touches your inner being and that you really reach out to to the Lord. I, I really do because I don't know about you, but I can't make it without the Lord, okay? <laughs> And I thank God that I'd, I'd be a wreck, a wreck undone, as they say, if I if I didn't have him. But Shonda, one of the other things that I that you do is you you are called the business midwife. Tell us about that. Listen, everybody is pregnant with purpose. Man, woman, boy, girl, everybody is pregnant with purpose. And everybody in the body has a position and a calling. I know that my position and my calling. It's to women that are broken, women that uh, the world has thrown away to literally go and snatch back my sister to say, uh-uh, because -uh, sometimes you need, you know, if you ever fight and you need your sister to come along and say, get up, fight, hit back, do something. That's, that's one area. Another area is in the corporate world. I am more often than not the only Black woman in a room when we're talking about corporate, you know, um, arenas. And I began to notice some things as it pertains to business, as it pertains to moving in excellence, as it pertains in operating in excellence of business. And that coupled with the fact that there are so many of us that have 
a business in us. You are pregnant with business and your purpose is tied to your brand or your business. And to have the strategy, the skills, if you think about a midwife, I worked in OBGYN for a long time. And if you think about a midwife, they are not giving birth to your baby. This is your baby, but they have skills. They have expertise. They can tell you. They can identify some things. They can identify some things that will help you along the way and help you mold even after you give birth. They can help you along the way. So my job is not to put my fingerprints on the vision and the purpose that God has given you, but it is to give you the skills, the strategies, the systems to not operate as a small business. I don't work with small businesses. I work with large corporations in the making. If it's just, even if it's just one person. So that very thought right there coming in the door of breaking the chains of mediocrity, breaking the chains of, yes, we have a work to do. Yes, we work up to, yes, we work up through, but starting off, giving those skills, giving those foundational structures, giving those um, the, the, the jargon that happens in these business arenas. That's what a business midwife is. And that's what I do for my clients. So you heard what she said. So everybody's got at least something in them if you haven't gotten it out yet. And you might have something out and there's something else that you need to do. So just remember Sh Shonda here. And Shonda is <clears throat> from Speak woman magazine speakwomanmagazine.com definitely go and check out her magazine okay and she's going to talk about her book but you can also take a look at it at speakwomanmagazine.com right slash shop and check out her book her magazine and everything else so shonda now I want us to transition into talking about your book what is the holy spirit is my business power partner, empowering entrepreneurs to dominate with holy help. Woo, it's a mouthful, ain't it? <laughs> so come on, talk a little bit about this. Woo, listen, we, we, I, I love the Holy Spirit. And along the way, as I shared, I, there has been a real life relationship that the Holy Spirit and I have developed in every area of my life. And I'm talking about, you know, how most people say, oh, I'm just, you know, let me just go pray or let me go ask the Holy Spirit. No, before I make a step, I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, what's going on? What are we doing? Because I I know I'm an anxious person. I'm a quick person. I can move too fast. And so I begin to have these conversations with my clients as well and begin to just work, work, things out in myself and work things out along this business trail that I've been on for the last 20 years. And it's been a journey. And all along the way, there are keys and principles that I have collected and that I have um, written down and written in my heart. And it has been a journey of partnering with the divine instead of me saying, I'm going forth and then I'm, I'm going to consult the Holy Spirit here and there. No, we make a collective agreement, a covenant together, and we are in partnership together. So if this ship sink, <laughs> then it is not just one person. If you have a partnership with a, 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 a person, if the ship sink, they looking at both of y'all. They're not looking at one. They looking at both. So coming into that covenant and all of these mm -hmm. uh, ups and downs and things that occur along this journey of entrepreneurship and in the corporate world and in the leadership world, all of these keys are important, but it's first understanding that I lose at the gate if I don't consult my business partner. And yeah. those keys we placed in this book because we want to dominate. You know, we we want to dominate in our brain. We we look at we look at 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 whatever industry there are people that are dominating the industry. We want to dominate the industry. Yeah. We want to do it with a pure heart. We want to do it with a pure conscience. And I that's the way that I can do it is by partnering with the Holy Spirit because when I feel like I got a cut corner, when I feel like I got to push you down because you too high. When I feel like, uh, no, I can't go over here because of this or that. I can go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I, this is how I feel. 
And the Holy Spirit can filter that and to say, all right, the best decision for us is to go left, to go right. The best decision for us is for you to do the uncomfortable. Or the best decision for us is to walk away from an opportunity that looks like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Because all money ain't good money. All connections are not good connections. All relationships are not good relationships. And we can sometimes want desire to be in certain relationships with people and we are upset because we were rejected or declined but in all actuality I can look and I can say to my business partner thank you because I was getting ready to make a desperate move <laughs> and, and the Holy Spirit talks to me and tell, tells me are you looking at this approaching this from a kingdom mindset or from a lack mindset Kingdom mindset. Yes, I have to learn. I have to grow. I have to educate. I have to get, have mentors. I have to have coaches. I have to have representatives that can help me, but I'm doing it out of an abundance mindset. Not that I have to connect with this person yeah. or all else is fails. This yeah. is how we dominate. And we can only do that in partnership in covenant with the Holy Spirit. Mm, that's rich. That's rich. Now, one, um, there's a statement in your um, introduction that I wanted you to speak to real quick. Well, it doesn't have to be quick. <laughs> but you said um, in your book for the reader that you were going to explore the limitations of human knowledge, helping them to recognize the need to seek divine wisdom and discernment in their decision making process. Speak to that a little bit. Wow. Now that is for my seasoned soldiers, okay. you know, when, when, <laughs> and, and even folk, you know, when you're walking in, but how many people you can have a conversation about business, about moving forward. And I, I've been in the game 30 years. I've been in the game 40 years and we're relying on our knowledge, which is beneficial, which mm -hmm. is helpful. Yes. But there is a limitation to our natural human knowledge there is a limit the holy spirit hears conversations that we don't hear the holy spirit can search somebody else's heart that mm -hmm. we can't do on the outside and so if i'm the, if i'm relying on my human knowledge i've been in the game 20 years but i i rarely in a conversations will say even if i don't agree or even if it's not for me, I won't say I've been in the game 20 years. What, what can you tell me? And you just got here six months ago because the Holy Spirit says you better close your mouth. You know, you, you, you can listen and intake. It may not be for me. It may be from a perspective that is not good, but mm -hmm. the divine will sharpen my discernment. You can have a short conversation with somebody and the Holy Spirit will say, you need to connect with that person. Well, this person just came in the game or this person doesn't have a million followers or a, a, a high level of influence. Mm -hmm. But that is a divine connection, a divine relationship that you need along the way. So relying on our human knowledge, knowledge is good. Education is good. Certification is good. I, I've been... Uh, I am a learner, a constant learner. I want to make uh, knowledge and a, a everyday thing in my life. Mm -hmm. But I understand that knowledge, human knowledge can only go but so far. And I have to always revert to the divine and ask him, okay, I can say, God, this, this makes sense to me. I can have a conversation with my business partner. Yes. To say, Holy Spirit, listen, I, I don't understand I don't think this is a good idea, but not my will, your will be done because you have the majority in this situation. I always give the Holy Spirit 51%. I got 49, he got 51. <laughs> <laughs> he can always override me. And at times, because the discernment sharpens, the likelihood of my natural knowledge being close to the divine knowledge it's increasing along the way mm -hmm. because my heart, my ear has become sharpened. And so I can say, wait a minute, but ultimately, even with that growth, I ultimately have to know that it's only but so far that my human knowledge can take me and that I must rely on my Holy Spirit, on the Holy Spirit, who is my ultimate business partner.
Yeah, I think I think and your your book speaks to to that immensely. <clears throat> the importance of us really understanding Holy Spirit in our lives and that we can't move, we can't think, we can't breathe without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead us as we are um, coming together to you and your partner, strategizing, planning things out, determining what the goals are, um, time factors, um, all of those things. And even when we have, you said, a setback, we don't have to sit in it. Holy Spirit will lead us. Holy Spirit will guide us so that we don't have to sit in that place. That's powerful because that is a chapter that we talk about in the book. We talk about what happens when adversity comes. What happens when it's not going well? How do we manage those emotions? Mm -hmm. What do we do in those emotions? How do we find the light? How do we find the right and the wrong? And that is actively asking and bringing those emotions, good, bad, or indifferent, ultimately always going back to the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes even, you know, when, when we're winning, we can, we can take it on ourselves. And then when we're losing, we can put it all on the Holy Spirit <laughs> when, we, when it looks like we're losing. But ultimately, the Holy Spirit is there to say, I need you to consult me every day, all day, in all things. So that that fear, that frustration, that anger, sometimes we're mad that a deal didn't go through. We mad that something in, in business that we thought was going to take off, it hasn't taken off. And we can come back and say, Holy Spirit, now I thought that this was going to take off. Now I had, now I don't know. I believe we had this conversation that Holy Spirit could say, no, you had the conversation. You was talking <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes the Holy Spirit will sit there and be like, okay, because we try to, we try to convince, you know, we, you ever drug something to God to say, bless this God, instead of saying, God, show me what you want my heart to desire and all of that. So in that brokenness, in that pain, we take everything to the Holy Spirit because he can give us a different perspective and to say the rejection was for your protection. Mm. That's ooh, that's all right there. That's that's real good. That's real good. Also, um, you talk about our faith, the faith that we need as we are um, going through, endeavoring through whatever it is that we are trying to to build that the Lord has predestined for us. And I've heard people say things like, "We don't business is separate from." from church and businesses separate from going and speaking about the word and, 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 and how do you, how do you inform people that is all, all business is God's business? Listen, that is, that is a phrase that I would be like, I'll fall out my chair. I'd be like, Oh Lord, have mercy because I don't get it. But I also, I do get it. You know how people want to have this separation between the two because we want control, you know, we want to be in power. We want to have the ability to say, I'm self-made. We've heard that, but I'm self-made, I'm self-made. Or if it all fails, God don't love me, God, I, this ain't for me. And so we are literally having all of these emotions because we're trying to separate something that should not be separated. God is with you everywhere you go. The Holy Spirit is with you everywhere you go. The Bible says that if you make your bed in hell, that I will be with you. If you make your bed in it, so who you are, your faith, mm -hmm. your integrity, your core values, if you are a person of faith, it's gonna change every decision that you make. It's gonna change your policies and procedures. It's gonna change your morale. Mm -hmm. It's gonna change the people that you put in positions. Because we all know that, you know, stuff fall from the top. That's what that's what the folks say. Mm -hmm. Stuff it's falls from the top. It is the truth. So if your leadership, if you don't have that core foundation, then you're going to lose your mind because there's going to come a time when business is good and you can get high off your own supply and lose your mind. It's going to be times when business goes down and you can lose your mind 
how many entrepreneurs commit suicide. It's mm -hmm. outrageous. And so if we're separating the two, then we are separating ourselves. And it's like Velcro. The more you separate, you're taking off layers instead of saying this is supposed to be together. That God is the ultimate business strategist. God is the ultimate strategist to say, I want to be involved in every area of your life, mm -hmm. especially your business. Because when you build a business and you are a person of faith, I'm not telling you what to believe, who to believe, none of that. But for me, when I build that business, it's going to be for the betterment of the people, the money, the influence that's going to come. But I've made a promise to God, to the Holy Spirit, to my partner, that when the, when the congratulations come and the hands clapping come, my first response is to God be the glory. <laughs> That's my first response. And in bad times, when it's looking bad and everybody walk away, my first response is to God be the glory. To God be the glory. That's what keeps me sane. That's what keeps you sane is your core yeah. beliefs in who you are, the faith. And then what's so beautiful and I'm grateful about God is because the scripture says that, that Jesus tells us that Satan wanted to sift you as weak. Satan don't want you to have a prospering business and you're a person of faith. You're a good person that's going to go out here and help more people and solve more problems and decrease the chaos. He don't want that to happen. Jesus said, but I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you. So even when we've reached our brink, we have an impartation of the faith of Jesus and knowing that he, the Holy Spirit is interceding for us when we can't even pray for ourselves. So how can I not invite the Holy Spirit into every atmosphere of my life and, and still stay, stay, stay sane. It's impossible. Amen. All right. So y'all remember this, you need your faith and need to understand that all business is God's business. Can't do it without him. Not if you're going to do it right. Now you can do it wrong without him, but you can't do it right without him. That's, that's a good way to see it. So, Shonda, <laughs> um, I want to talk now about, because I want you all to get her book. So we're not going to give y'all all the meat of her book. We want you to go get the book. Get the copy of the book, okay? Get her book. Get a book for somebody else so that you all can talk about the book, have a discussion about the book, or get your little tea group together your coffee drinking group or whatever you want to call it, your sisterhood together and sit down and dig into this book. But I want you to talk about your magazine with us. Yes, ma'am. A labor of love like this, that she is her own person. I call her a she because she's been doing her thing. Speak Woman Magazine and Marketing, we are a global publication. We have been in publication for about 10 years. And this was birthed out of that space of being broken mm. and really needing to hear the voices of overcomers, really needing to hear stories told from a triumphant perspective, not that everything is good or feels good, but I don't want to hear the pity party. If I'm low and you're going to tell, oh yeah, it's bad and don't get no better. <laughs> I can't hear that. I can't hear that. But if you can tell me, yes, yeah, bad, you can be real. It hurts. Uh-huh. Yeah. But let me tell you how God used something that didn't feel good in my life but he used it to prosper me, used it to get me over, used it to push me through. And that gives me strength. Our eye gates, our ear gates, all of the intake, what we're putting in, that gives me strength. And that alone is what we stand on. Women coming together, telling their stories. And we also have the branding and marketing side of it because 99.9% .9 of the women that have stories, they have a brand. Because they said, oh, okay, I done went through this. And they said, oh, no, the game is to be sold, not told. Let me create something out of this. Let me create something out of this pain. I've pushed through and I've had this baby. So let me make sure this baby is, is, is benefiting the world that is creating a different atmosphere for those that came behind me. And that's what we do. We share stories. We are in over 15 countries now growing. We are even in a 
in the area of the world where literally women telling their stories, they could literally die. So we are unlocking, unmuting these barriers that many women have. We share our stories every day, women across the world. And it's like a chain reaction. But we are a platform that can say, hey, we 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 understand you've you've done great you've done amazing so how many women have, have how are we able to applaud how many women are we able to give a platform to so they can tell their story and they look good they telling their story in excellence they telling their story listen let me tell you what that old enemy thought whether it be sickness whether it be losing a child that's whether it be uh, um just going through the struggles of life violence trauma but to be able to say on the other side, ah, yeah, on the other side, Long I man. came out not smelling like smoke, more beautiful with more money. So we're going to come get the bag. We're going to come get the bag. <laughs> we got the bag and the beauty. Ah, glory. <laughs> y'all, y'all heard it from Shonda, okay? From Shonda. She talked about her book, but she talked about her life, Okay. And you, you only got, you, you didn't even get that much of it, but she shared some really good stuff with us today. But her book, The Holy Spirit is My Business Partner, Empowering Entrepreneurs to Dominate with Holy Help. Get a copy of her book. Listen, she is at speakwomanmagazine.com, right slash shop. You can get her book there. You can also... You probably already have a story that's maybe out. You might want to be in her magazine, okay? She is always looking for women to show, to spotlight. I think that's a good word, to spotlight in her magazine. And I can tell you one thing. If you want to excel, if you want to develop, and I'm sure Shonda can attest to this, you're going to have to have a little budget set aside, people, and be willing to put out a little bit but it's branding and marketing, which is a must. My S3 model says, if you don't show up, people don't know who you are. If you don't speak out, people don't know you exist. And guess what? If you don't share it, people don't know what's in your toolbox. So you got to show up, you got to speak out, and you got to share it. And the only way you're going to do that is to get on the, not every platform, but on the right platforms. The right platforms is really moving through these wonderful, this wonderful world that God has created. All of these social arenas that we are now able to connect to, all of these countries we can tap into sitting just at our desk at our computer. Mm. Speak Woman Magazine is, is able to help you to do that. So I got to give a shout out to Shonda because she is doing some, some powerful things. I, I, I was always impressed when I talked to her. And today I even learned more about this woman who is striving daily to put forth her best, to be excellent in everything that she does. So Shonda, I would like for you to share a final thought with everybody and then remind them um, if you have an email that they can reach you at as well, they might have a question for you, need some guidance. Wow. Well, first I have to say to God be the glory. <laughs> I am so grateful for you, Dr. West. You are amazing. And I am, I am very, very clear on the voice of God and, and, and the divine connections that are, are occurring in our lives. And so i have just blessed God for the divine connection that this is the first, but it won't be the last. And, and there is so much greatness that is to come. And I'm just honored to be connected and be in partnership with amazing women like yourselves yeah. who are activating voices, unlocking. That's what we are all about. Speak Woman is a declaration. So my takeaway is... Thank you, everyone, for listening to Dr. Vanessa Chat Podcast, brought to you by John A. Publishing. Be sure to stay tuned in for future conversations and engagements. Check out the website, jotnapublishing.org, and subscribe to this show on your preferred podcast app. Shout out to Donnie Five for the production. Be blessed and be a blessing. Peace. <laughs>